Do you enjoy flying around your Minecraft world using elytra wings? Would you like to keep track of how far you've flown and have it shown up on the tab bar? And maybe use this score to form clubs with fellow server mates who have flown a similar distance? Well now you can and I am going to show you exactly how to do it. <laughs> Hello there ladies and gents, how are you all doing and welcome to this command block tutorial where I'm going to show you how you can set up the tab bar to display the distance flown with your elytra wings just like it shows up there. Now this is a rather simple step by step tutorial, all you actually need to do is you need to write 8 command lines in the chat bar and then you need three lines going into command blocks. Now of course for this you will need to be in creative mode so you will need to be OP'd. If you're not either ask an admin to OP you or pass them the link to this video and see if they can do it for you. So let's get myself into game mode one. There we go we are now in creative mode. Right, so now that we're in creative mode, I'm going to run you through all these different lines of code that we're going to be putting in step by step. Now, don't worry, I'm going to be taking the time and each line is going to be appearing on the screen and we're going to take a little bit of a pause after each step just so you can pause the video, make sure you get these commands down properly. Now, you do want to make sure you spell them accurately, including upper and lower case where I use it. So just to make sure that everything goes through perfectly and these command lines will work. Now the first two lines that we're going to be putting in are going to be going into the chat bar and they're going to be changing some game rules so that these commands aren't going to be spamming the console or filling up the log files. Now the first one we need to put in is going to be the game rule so that the command blocks don't actually fill up the um, console. So it is the following. So game rule space command block output and of course the B and O from block and output need to be capitals, command block and false. There you go, the game will command block output has been updated to false. And the next game rule that we're going to be amending is the log admin command. This is so it doesn't fill up the log folder. So log admin commands, again the A and C need to be in capitals log admin commands and that needs to be set to false as well and there we go right then so now that we've got those game rules amended now it's time to get into the nitty-gritty of the actual commands that we're going to be doing now we're going to be modifying some of the objectives namely the stat.av81centimeter as that is how the game keeps track of how far you've flown using the elytra now we are going to be modifying it but we don't want to modify that stat exactly so we need to make a variable of that so what we're going to be doing is the first line we're going to be putting in again these will be appearing on the screen is forward slash score scoreboard there's no t in scoreboard thank you now like i say is the objectives that we're going to be modifying so objectives then we want to be adding now i'm going to be calling the variable elytra this is nice and easy to keep track of. After all, that is what we're modifying. And then the stat statistic we're going to be modifying is stat.av8. Now, one with capital O and centimeter or CM capital C. There we go. There we are. New objective Elytra adding successfully. Right, so the next line we need to do is we need to tell the computer what it is that we need to show up in the tab bar now of course this is something we're going to be modifying so it's just going to be a dummy for now so again this is going to be up in the screen at the moment so scoreboard objectives now we need to add a new one a new objective new variable so it's going to be distance flown is what we're going to be calling it all one word capital D capital F like I say, this is something we're going to be modifying, so for now it's just a dummy. So, scoreboard, objectives, add distance flown, capital D, capital F, dummy. There we go. That has been added successfully. Well, now that we've got the distance flown added as an objective, 
we need to tell the computer to put that objective up in the tab bar. So again, it is going to be scoreboard. All of these at the moment are going to be scoreboard and objectives until the last one. So forward slash scoreboard objectives. There we go. Now we need to set the display to show where it's going to put. So set display, all one word. Now there are three different places that you can show this display. You have the tab bar, the sidebar, and also underneath the player's name. Now we want it up in the tab bar. So that is list. That is what the computer knows that as. So if we have set display list, and it is the distance flown that we're going to be wanting it to show. So again, capital D, capital F, set display list distance flown. There we go. That is now set the display objective in the slot list to distance flown. And if we hold the tab bar, you can see there we are. Now, of course, it's showing zero where it showed one earlier because I have actually reset as well, so the objectives will show up. <laughs> but there we go. That is showing the objective in the tab bar now. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, well, there you go. It's showing up in the tab bar. It's done. Wrong. Because remember, what we're modifying is the stat.av8 one centimeter. If I start flying around now, yes, that number will be going up, but it will be going up incredibly quickly because that is showing how far we've flown in centimetres. So now comes the rather tricky bit of getting that number into kilometres. And that means we need to divide it by 100,000 because there's 100,000 centimetres in one kilometre. Now, again, we don't want to be modifying our new objective directly. So we need to set up a second objective another dummy one that we can modify and then tell it that distance flown is equal to that number it sounds rather complicated but when you actually follow it step by step it is rather logical because this way you're not going to be messing up any statistics permanently so what we need to do now is we need to put a new objective in so scoreboard objectives there we go now again, we're going to be adding a new one, and to avoid confusion, we're going to be calling this distance flown, but distance flown 2, because this is the second one, and this is the one that we're going to be modifying. So, distance flown, again, capital D, capital left, with a 2 on the own, and again, this is going to be a dummy because it is going to be modifiable. So, scoreboard objectives, add distance flown 2, capital D, capital left, dummy. There we go. Okay, so now that we've got that variable added, we need to allocate a number to that. So we need to tell the console, the computer, that you need to associate a number with that distance flown to. So first of all, we need to put in a number. So, or tell it to put a number in. So it's scoreboard objectives. Add, now, number dummy. So when we put in number later on, It'll allocate a number to that. So, forward slash scoreboard objectives, add number dummy. There we go. That's that one added. Now, I know a lot of this probably isn't making much sense. It will come in very useful and it will make a lot more sense in a moment when we get down to doing the command blocks. Because all these that we've been typing in will be um, modified and used in the command blocks we'll be putting in in a moment. But right now, there is one more line we need to put into the chat bar. And then that is going to be scoreboard. Now, this is where it actually modifies the player's distance. So instead of objective, it's players. So scoreboard players. Now we need it to set. Then we want distance in kilometers. So capital D, capital K, capital M. Now the number for that is going to be 100,000. So there you go, forward slash scoreboard players set distance km, capital D, capital K, capital M, number 100,000. Now like I say, these might not make sense at the moment, but now it's time to put in the three command blocks we're going to be needing, and then all these objectives that we've just put in will make sense. Right, so now that we've got those lines done in the chat bar, now we need to get down to the nitty gritty of using the command blocks. Now, it is only three command blocks that we're going to need. But first of all, you need to decide where you're going to put these command blocks. Now, they need to be in the spawn chunks so that they're always constantly loaded. 
and ideally you want to have them protected by bedrock so they don't get discovered or damaged or broken in any way unless by someone who's supposed to be there. You could place them like the Hermes did on the Hermitcraft server and right down in the base layer of the bedrock. Or you could do like we did on the village craft server and build a bedrock room down at the bottom of these spawn chunks because you never know when you might need a bit more room for a few more command blocks in the future. Well here we are, I've got to made a room surrounded by bedrock and yeah I went and decorated a little bit because why not make these rooms a little bit fancy, add a bit of your own quirkiness to them. But anyway, now we need to get down to the nitty gritty of using the command blocks. Now we have three command blocks that we're going to be needing. We need one repeating command block and two chain command blocks. Now if you don't know how to access them, you have to use a command. So yeah, as you can see, I've got the uh, diamond suits and the iron suit achievements anyway. But what we need to do is give myself those command blocks. So what we need to do is forward slash give. Now it is for me. So might as well just do at P, nearest player. Now we need a repeating command block. So repeating underscore command underscore block. Now we only need the one so we can leave that blank. There we go. Now we need two chain command blocks. So we might as well do the same command. But we'll take out repeating. We'll put in chain. And we're in creative mode so we might as well just give ourselves one. We can always put it down twice. There we go. So we have a repeating command block and chain command block. Right, now that we've given ourselves these command blocks, let's make use of them. Now the purpose of these command blocks is to constantly monitor the distance flowing with your elytra, uh, transform it from centimetres to kilometres and then put that up in the tab bar. So the first things first is you need the repeating command block and you need to type in the following command. Execute at a tilde space tilde space tilde. That's what that little squiggly line is. Uh, scoreboard players operation. There we go. At P. Now distance flown to capital D capital F two equals at P Elytra capital E. Now that needs to be on repeat, unconditional and always active. So once that's all done, click done. There we go, that command is now set. Now the first chain block that we put down, there we go. Now this is going to change the distance flown to divided by 100,000. Now the way we do that is we have scoreboard, players, Operation. Now at A. Now distance flown to. Capital D. Capital F. Distance flown to. Now you need to forward slash, which is divide by a score equal to distance KM. Capital D. Capital K. Capital M. And then the number. Now remember the number we put in earlier was a hundred thousand. So again. Chain, unconditional, always active. And we click done. There we go, command has been set. And now we put down the final chain command block. There we go, this is the last one you need to do. And this is where it's going to be taking the variable that we've been modifying, so the distance flown to, which has been divided, and need to tell the computer that the number we're putting in the tab bar is equal to that. So we need execute at a tilde space tilde space tilde scoreboard players operation at p now distance flown capital d capital f there we go equals at p the players distance flown to capital D capital F again chain unconditional always active 
And there we go, folks. That is it. So if we head on back up to the top. And we put ourselves back into survival mode. So game mode zero. Now, as you can see, I've already got some rockets. The tab bar shows zero. Then if we fly off. Any moment now. As you can see, it's not going up. So we're not registering the centimeters. We're waiting to have traveled one kilometer. So with any luck, this should change up in just a moment. And we shall see the commands of working. Any minute now. Come on. There we go, folks. You see that changed to one. We flew one kilometer. So there we are, folks. Let's come into land. Woohoo. There we go. So there we are. That is how you have the tab bar display the distance you have flown with your elytra in kilometers. Now, like I say, every single line that I've put in, you can pause the video. The lines that you need to enter chat will be on the screen. But I really hope you have found this tutorial easy to use and very informative. It took me a while to figure this out. I spent a good few hours trying to piecemeal all the different bits of information on how to do this from the internet, put it all together because there wasn't a step-by-step -step tutorial. Well, there is now. If you have found this tutorial helpful, folks, please go ahead and hit that like button. Share it with all your admin friends, server mates, and anyone else who needs this in the forums or whatnot. Please spread the word, folks. Don't let anybody else have to suffer the way I did in trying to figure this out. But for now, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you all again soon. Take it easy. Bye.